Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, my name is Jesse Graff, and I'm the Director of Accessible Education at Southwestern Oregon Community College. Um, and so one of my roles, my primary role, deals with supporting students with disabilities, whether they're long-term disabilities or short-term disabilities. So we'll go into a little bit about that in a moment. Um, but... First, um, the mission of the Accessible Education Services Office is to create a barrier-free environment in order to support and celebrate each person's uniqueness and individual needs, to build upon that, to challenge students, and to reduce inaccurate beliefs and stereotypes about people with disabilities. Um, and so we respect all people regardless of disability. It's part of our mission statement as a whole at Southwestern, but something that um, my office and staff focus really specifically on at Southwestern. Um, so not only do we provide services to students who have disabilities, again, whether they're long-term or short-term, um, but we also support with student advocacy um, and other academic supports that students may need in order to be successful at Southwestern. Um, so having um, accommodations, particularly educational accommodations that you need is an important if not a crucial part of learning and education. And so students um, with disabilities who attend Southwestern can be candidates to receive accommodations and supports um, both in the classroom and for some students as appropriate housing accommodations as well. Um, and I wish I could tell you like really explicitly what they are, but it truly just depends on the student because every person is individual and unique and so needs vary from person to person. There are um, reasonable and appropriate accommodations um, that can change or supplement what a student's programming may look like. Um, and that can also um, go into how students access college facilities, other programs, activities on campus that are outside of what's offered in the academic setting, in their classes. Um, and so the only caveat is that we wouldn't fundamentally change what a course is about. Um, and so that's where accommodations come in to support a student's learning without changing the course and the nature of the class as well as whatever the course outcomes are. Um, and so we're not required to provide the best or most desired accommodations, but really what's reasonable. And so what a student is receiving in high school in order to be successful in the classroom may look a little bit different than what can be provided on the community college level. Just given the levels of support that we're able to provide on campus versus uh, what K-12 is able to provide for students. Um, and so if you're a student with a disability or if you are a parent or guardian of a student with a disability, um, some examples of course accommodations may include extra times on tests, exams, quizzes, um, having access to a separate testing area, especially to facilitate aid and attention, um, additional time on course assignments, copies of course lectures, which may also include um, the professor's direct lecture notes, PowerPoints, what have you, um, an alternate format for books, if it's easier to process things through hearing, um, and so many more. And again, it really just depends on the individual student, since we all learn in such unique, different ways. Um, so there are ways to get uh, connected to course accommodations. Um, so after you are admitted to Southwestern, your next step would be filling out the Accessible Education Services application, which you can find in my Laker link. Um, this PowerPoint will also be emailed out to families, and this is a hyperlink, so you should be able to just click and then access um, the application that way as well. Um, so that's your first step. After that, or even at the same time, if it's best for you, um, you can provide documentation about that disability. Um, and so from the K-12 lens, that might include a copy of your most recent 504, uh, your most recent IEP, 
and especially if you're giving us your most recent IEP, it's really helpful to have your most recent three-year reevaluation, um, just because that has really crucial information from the school psychologist who conducted those assessments um, that can really help us formulate a really solid plan to support in, in school. Um, so after that, um, once you fill out the application, then we get that supporting documentation and paperwork. Um, then you would call the office or email me um, to set up a meeting so that we can go over some requested course accommodations that you believe may be best. Um, and then we can come up with a plan and get you the support that you need at Southwestern. Um, Self-advocacy is really uh, a key concept in our program. So when I meet with students and we determine that certain accommodations are appropriate for them, they'll leave the office with a physical copy of what's been approved by our office. And so in order to help streamline that process, um, I will email the faculty members who the student is taking courses with for that term um, just to open those lines of communication so that students can disclose what those accommodations are and what they need. Um, but I'm not permitted to go to the staff and say this is exactly what the student has. Um, that's where that advocacy piece comes in. The student can say, you know, in this course I've been approved for extra time on tests, quizzes, and exams, so I'd like to utilize it for science, but here's another course where I only have a final. I'm not going to worry about telling that instructor about that accommodation. Um, and so it's really on the student to share and disclose what those are, but staff do have access to knowing what exactly um, a student has been approved for in terms of accommodations. Um, so again, filling out an application, providing proper documentation, um, and on top of that, knowing what your needs are as they relate to whatever uh, your disability or disabilities may need. Um, because things may change over time, and you're the best gauge of yourself, so just communicating that openly to the office is one of the best things you can do so that we can just ensure that everything is up to date and you're supported as needed. Um, our responsibilities as well in the office is that we are responsible for being aware of laws um, that provide for students with disabilities in post-secondary schools um, and providing reasonable accommodations to students with those documented disabilities um, as well as um, you know students contacting the office we're expected to communicate back well and in a timely manner and also provide a positive environment where students are encouraged and equipped with the skills needed in order to advocate for themselves in the classroom. Um, so again, my name is Jessie Gaff, um, and I'm the Director of Accessible Education um, in the Office of Accessible Education in Student Services at Southwestern. Um, my email address is just my first name, jessie.graff, my last name, at soft.edu. Um, and my direct line as well is 541-888-1578. Um, and so something that I didn't include in this PowerPoint um, that I really should have and I will for my next presentation is that sometimes students may, um, may have short-term disabilities. And what we primarily see on campus um, is like concussions, especially when it comes to our student athletes. Um, concussions can create some academic barriers and learning barriers in the short term for students. So typically with something like that, students may benefit from having additional time in order to complete assignments um, and access to other resources too. So even if you know, you're know you coming into Southwestern and you don't have a documented disability, say you join a team and unfortunately you suffer from a concussion, um, one of the best things you can do is come into our office and we can discuss how to get you short-term support in order to keep your academic trajectory going. Yeah. So thank you all so much. I appreciate your time and thank you again for being here today. <laughs>